know a secret that inside each and every one of you, there are at least seven women. You have a team inside of you guys. So the seven women is about reinvention, it's about exploring, and it's about community. Yeah, the 80s were great. I remember the big chandelier earrings. I remember the shoulder pads. We love fuchsia. We loved our colors. And the reason I know all of this is because I opened a clothing store. They need me. I'm from Chagrin Falls, Ohio, the preppy capital of the world. You go pink and green. Yeah. Kate could run that store. Kate was the boss. Kate was responsible. She was committed. She was dependable. That was also me. Does anybody remember or have any of those qualities in them today? My definition of burnout is this. You're really good at what you do. In fact, you can do it blindfolded. You can do it in your sleep. But here's the deal. You don't want to do it anymore. You're tired of it. You don't want to do it anymore. And you know what? I was tired of retail. Kate was tired. Kate was sick of being perfect. Kate was sick of being dependable. She wanted to have some fun. So for me, I had to reinvent myself. I don't know if anybody in here is in that mode right now, but I'm finding more and more people are thinking about reinvention. Zoe did not know it at the time, but she was woman number two. Lo and behold, the woman sitting next to me, this had to be serendipity, or the spirit, as Oprah would say, but the woman sitting next to me was a professional speaker. She spoke on happiness. <laughs> she is your caretaker and your nurturer, and for many of you in here, you need your Zoes right now, okay? Donna is the woman who is your marketer. She is your personal branding guru. Donna knows every single thing that you do well. When you were a kid, Donna said, raise your hand, you know the answer, and you said, no, I'm not 100% sure. And everybody, all those little boys had their hands raised, but girls, we, we had to be 100% sure. Donna was mad at you, raise your hand, you know it, you know it. She was your cheerleader inside. Whenever you go into a store and you see hats, Donna's the one that says, put that hat on. She is assertive, okay? She knows how to stand her ground. She's courageous and fearless. We all have Donna in us. She could be asleep for some of you. Today, wake her up. Hanging out Hannah is about unplugging. Hanging out Hannah is about not putting makeup on on the weekends and being okay with it. We're in a baseball cap. That's what they were made for. But Hannah is about giving you permission. We feel guilty all the time. Now women call me up, they go, I'm having a Hannah weekend. One day I was at Kroger's in my neighborhood and I walked by someone who looked just like me and she looked at me and she went, Hannah Day? And I went, mm-hmm. So before I get into anything on Trudy, did you know that 50% of the world is under the age of 30? Maybe not in the United States, certainly not in this room. I was looking. Baby boomers, I was looking. I didn't see too many. 50% of the world is under the age of 30, so what? So yeah, that means a lot. You need to remember this. All of you need to remember this because this is our future. The train has left the station and it ain't going back. More people are on Facebook that were on the entire planet 200 years ago. So what I thought I would do briefly is to tell you a little bit about the generations. Why? Because to me, I think there are two huge factors right now that will really kind of really be dominant of your success. Number one, your ability to adapt and change and understand young people and the way they do things. And number two, using technology. Hey, are there any baby boomers in this room? These are people that were are born between 1946 and 1964. Let me see. I thought so. The whole room, practically. Whoa. Was anybody in here a hippie? Oh, yeah, no. In Galveston, they admit it. No one admits it in Houston. <laughs> Galveston, they're all here right now. The hippie, yeah, right there. Think back to those days of make love, not war. Hippie, long hair. Tie-dye, Birkenstocks. One day the hippie sees a friend reading the Wall Street Journal and notices stockbrokers make millions. Takes out the earring, cuts his hair, puts on a pinstripe suit, and becomes a Republican. <laughs> so baby boomers keep thinking that Gen Y is going to change, but I don't think it's going to happen because of technology. Gen X, my favorite generation. The most creative of all the generations. These are 30-year-olds and people in their mid-40s. Let's see, stand up, Gen X. I gotta see where the creativity is. This is a generation who loves, yes. Th these are our leaders. Come on, Gen Y. Any people in the room under 30? Let's see. 
Oh, I'm going to be so nice. But lock the door just in case. I don't want them to leave, right? <laughs> Gen Y, I make fun of you, but you are the most, you are the most open-minded of all the generations. You are tech savvy. Every company, every woman at this table needs you. You need to teach us how to post pictures on Facebook. <laughs> So we're going to play a game, and I need help. Are there any? I would love to have all the generations up here. Is there anybody that loves to dance a little bit? If, you're, if you do, come on up and help me with this. Here we go. Now, you guys listen and do whatever comes to you, and we'll decide what generation they are. You can't touch this. Yes. You can't touch this. Audience. You can't touch this. because Gwen is all about women leaders. And Gwen talks about all of the talents that women have that maybe years ago people made fun of. <laughs> because now we're finding that problems today are very dimensional. Women are web thinkers. We get ideas. And one idea triggers another and another and another and another and another. And we think in a web. And many times that web confuses men. <laughs> they only want one answer. You gave me five, I'm mixed up, I'm confused. <laughs> And our last woman, I love the name, it's like the most popular baby name today, so were we on target or what, Meredith, is Sophia. And Sophia, in my mind, Meredith would call me up and say, Mom, are you Sophia yet? Not yet. Give me another month. We kept waiting to see when our Sophia would kick in, and one day I realized that Sophia is acceptance. Sophia is about thanking your body today for bringing you here, no matter what it looks like, because you need it. <laughs> Sophia is about not having to have the last word, letting your kids, letting your employees, letting your team have the last word because you know you're right anyway. <laughs> but you don't always have to prove yourself. Patty, I'm at an airport in Minneapolis. They love me, Patty. I rocked. I rocked. I rocked like a rock and rock star. And she goes, ooh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> have you been at the bar? Don't do that. She goes, that was gross, and she hangs up. <laughs> women. We get scared, women. We get scared when other people are successful. My sister Patty thought I got all the rock, and there was no rock left for her. And I want to tell you today, as I'm standing here doing this for 10 years, there's enough. There's enough love. There's enough compassion. There is enough money and men. There is enough rock for all of us. Thank you guys for having me. I hope this conference is awesome because you rock. You rock. Thank you.